Helger. And today, oh, here. Oh. background now. <laughs> and today we have Bevan Gibson with us. She's the director with Southern Illinois Professional Development Center in Southern Illinois um, University in Edwardsville. And she'll be covering the uh, tape 11 and 12. So with that, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Bevan. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them into the group chat. And then we will um, we'll make sure we cover those. If you otherwise, um, everyone is unmuted. If at any time you know during the uh, webinar it starts, we get a lot of background noise, then I may mute um, participants as I see where the noise is coming from. Um, but when it comes to the question uh, uh, segments, then we'll, I'll just make sure everyone is unmuted. So I'll turn it over to Bevan. Good morning. As you've all heard, there's a new test in town and the tape 11 and 12. I also realized that some of you use CASAS, um, but in adult education, which is who we do the professional development for, um, CASAS is strictly used for English as a second language students. And so I'm just going to be covering the table 11 and 12 for you today. Essentially, today we're going to talk about an overview of the table 11 and 12 um, and some information on the locator and some test content, as well as some of the blueprints that um, connect the, the standards that we use in adult education. But we're going to see some sample test items from each subject test area and explore some optional TABE online tools. Before we start out, it's important for you guys to know that ICCB's adult education programs began using TABE 11 and 12 on July 1st of 2018, and they require all programs to use TABE 11 and 12 as of January 1st of 2019, which is quickly approaching. Title I programs are required to begin using TABE 11 and 12 as of January 1st as well. So let's begin with an overview uh, of the Table 11 and 12, including some changes from the previous test. There are some changes for the new test, and the Table 11 and 12 now includes three content areas, reading, math, and language. There's only one length of test, which is, is a definite change, and no longer will there be a choice between using the survey or the complete battery form, and I know that a lot of people use the survey because it was a little shorter version, but that's not going to be an option with 11 and 12. The locator has 16 questions, and it has three two-part questions in reading. And the math test is now one test that is split into a calculator and non-calculator section. Changes to the alignment of the test. Um, table 11 and 12 is 100% aligned to the college and career readiness standards. Um, we use a lot of those in our adult education world, and I know that you guys have probably heard of those. Illinois offers all three high school equivalency tests, the TAS, the high set and the GED, and Table 11 and 12 is strongly aligned to all of those. Aligned with what one more time? Say what? This is up Patty from Erie House. Aligned with what you said one more time? They're aligned with the college and career readiness standards. And I'm going to let you know that at the end, Natasha's going to let you know that this whole PowerPoint is going to be uh, available to you. Okay? Okay. Yeah. All right. That, that, that's probably helpful to a visually visual person. So um, the Table 11 and 12 offers some new technology options as well. Um, there is a new local scanning solution. Uh, to use that feature, you have to have TABE score, you have to have to have TABE, the actual company, score your paper-based test, and your program must have a dual read, continuous feed, Twain compliant scanner, which is really kind of really techy stuff, but essentially a lot of um, copy machines actually have that capacity. Uh, also, the TestMate software is required if you're going to do that and is available on their website, so there's, you wouldn't have to purchase it at all. The online testing platform is still available and has a new, few new features. Uh, level L, literacy level, is not part of the online test. And we'll, we'll get into the level L in just a few moments because it's important for you to realize that the, the level L test is not available online at all. 
it has to be proctored by a staff person and um say what their microphones um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna mute the other participants for now so go ahead if you have any questions go ahead and enter them into the chat if you're using the computer-based online there are some accommodations that are built in for individuals that might need those uh, whether or not they have a disability or sometimes just the fact that they may have older eyes um, and need to have something magnified they assist the learner that there's a there are highlighters um, line guides there's a magnifier and a zoom and a calculator and then they can choose different colors of overlays as well as possibly online large print um, which may help if they have have visual difficulties contrasting colors and all of these are available um, sorry about that all of those are available on the, the website title one programs may administer the tape reading and or math um, we, we've had some discussions with title one and have found out that some of you just do the tape reading and some of you do both and some of you just do the math. But the test forms have to be, the important piece to know is that the test forms have to be alternated um, so that if you're gonna give a pre-test, and I don't know that you guys do pre and post testing, but if you do, if you're a school district and you're doing that, and, and with your youth programs, you might be doing pre and post testing for your grants, but they have to be alternated. So if you pre-test a student and when they come into your program with an 11, then you have to post test them with a 12. And you need to use the same level as the pretest that you gave. So if you did a level L, table uh, 11 for the pretest, then you would use a level L for the post test in, in level 12. You have to consider the primary focus of, of the program of study in determining whether to administer and report the tape math. We oftentimes say, if an individual is interested in welding, there's a lot of math involved with that. So I don't know how you guys do that. It may just be that you have it in your policy that you're gonna do both. But for customers entering Bridges and ICAPS programs that are adult education affiliated, where math is the key component, then we actually, if you have not given the math test, we would do that um, as part of entry into a welding program. Another piece about this is that used to um, they used grade equivalent scores on the table and now the table 11 and 12 is using scale scores instead of grade level scores so it may be helpful to have these charts on hand so if you print out this powerpoint you would have this chart um, to correlate a scale score to a grade level equivalent score to better connect your customers to college level and other training programs so that um, the NRS level may not mean anything to you. It does for adult education. So in, in terms of yours, if they get a scale score that is um, a 576, then you would know that that would be a grade level equivalent of a 9 to 10. So when you're selecting training or, or entry into college level things, then that's something you would want to take into consideration. So the scale score ranges uh, for math are different than the scale score ranges for reading. As you can see, there's a slight difference in those scores between the two tests. For pre-testing and post-testing, the test publisher actually has some guidelines that state 50 to 60 hours of instruction or participation in your, in your world is recommended when alternating test forms, so between the pre and post. So they say 50 to 60 hours. That would be 50, 50 to 60 hours of participation in your program. Um, for those of us in adult education, we use 40 hours um, as, as, a, as a standard for that, but the test publisher guidelines state 50 to 60 hours. The Data Recognition Corporation suggests that the guidelines uh, are best practice recommendations based upon the, the practitioner feedback, so that's why they set those guidelines at, at that 50 to 60 hours, okay? Moving on to the locator test. And um, at the WIOA Summit a couple of years ago, um, maybe last year, year before, I think, I did um, a session on the Table 11 and 12 for, for Title I and found that a lot of you are, were not using the locator. But on the Table 11 and 12, the use of the locator is required. 
So it's important to note that, that it is because for sex, successful uh, administration of the Table 11 and 12, the locator, there are three separate locators. There's a separate locator for the reading, one for the math, and one for the language. And I think oftentimes you guys don't use the language and we, we use it only in certain circumstances. But you would have to give a locator for the reading and a locator for the math. Uh, if you're doing it separately. So if you're going to just do the math test, you would get a locator for the math. If computer-based testing with the table online is used, the system uh, is set up to automatically administrator, administer the, the locator prior to any pretest. So I don't know that that decision has been made as um, a state organization as to whether or not you're going to be using table online. But if it is, then the, uh, the locator is actually built in, in place already. Also, with the computer-based testing, the locator is free, and it does not count towards paid usage if, if an individual takes the locator. The importance of using the locator, um, besides being required, the other, there are other important reasons for using the locator. The actual test was designed and validated with the locator being used. So it's important to use the same procedure for norming um, reliability, and so, other words, if you don't use a locator, if you just guess, you're going to be retesting a lot. It's also vital that you use a locator to ensure the appropriate level of test is given. The locator is now a stronger, much stronger predictor to the specific level that is indicated for the tape test. And you want to give customers the appropriate test level, and using the locator can help make that happen. And another benefit is to give the customer a chance to practice before taking the actual tape test. So they could take the locator test, and that gives them a, a just a little bit of uh, an inroad to uh, assessment, formalized assessment. So taking that locator actually gets them prepared. Each locator has 16 questions, and the reading locator contains three two-part questions as part of those 16 questions. Um, this chart indicates the, the correlation of the number correct on the locator with the test and their level. So if we look at that and we say, okay, we gave them the reading locator and they got five correct. If they got five correct, then we would administer the level E test. And if you feel that, we'll get into a little bit with the, the next piece on the L test because you'll notice there's not the level L there. Um, if, if it's a it's a five, don't, don't sit there and think, well, that's pretty close to a six. As I said, it was normed and has norming reliability, and so therefore, if it's a five, it's a five, and you would administer the level E pretest and the level E post-test, so if you're going to do post-testing. As far as the level L, not only is it not included on the online, in an online format, it only paper pencil version, but it is consumable and has to be proctored, okay? If the customer has difficulty during intake, like if you're you're working with a, a, a person at the intake and you notice that you suspect possibly a low literacy level, it is recommended that you give the level L word list test as a guide to placement of, of examinees in that level L. So the word list is actually um, available as part of the purchase of the level L test. It can be a it can be better for your customer to skip the locator if their literacy level is low. You don't want to make them feel like, I'm a total failure here, I can't even take this test. Um, instructions for administering and, and interpreting the level L word list are found on page 17 of the, the table 11 and 12 test directions book. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I don't know that you need to have guidance in that. I think you guys can figure that out. You've given the tape nine and 10 prior to. As far as another change with the table 11 and 12 is the allowable time. And this is kind of where a lot of people are kind of freaking out a little bit. It takes longer to complete. And the current allowable times, and I say the word allowable, because what we found is a lot of people um, may not take the full allowable amount of time to take the test but they revised them based on some information. They did 9,000 pilots, and they had a, a lengthier time um, prior to this, and so they actually uh, put that down a little bit. So in terms of that, the, the reading level now on level E, they get allowed time of 60 minutes. So 
before they were allowing two hours. <laughs> um, and so they found out they didn't need to allow 120 minutes, okay? Um, and so instead, that, but if you put the whole two pieces together for reading, it is 120. So you've got the reading part one being 60 minutes and the reading part two. As I said, it's broken down into two sections. So it takes a total of 120 minutes to do a reading test on level E, M, D, and A. Um, and then you've got 45 minutes for the locator for part one. There's not a locator for part two. There's just one reading locator. So if you start looking at this and, and you think, okay, um, if I do this, I give a locator for 45 minutes, and then I'm going to allow 120 minutes for a person to actually take the reading test. It's, it's quite obvious you're going to need to maybe break some of this down. Um, you don't want to over-tire someone who's being assessed. So as, as an organization, you guys need to figure out, um, maybe we want to give the locator on intake and then possibly do the, the testing um, at various kind of uh, intervals so that, that we don't over-test someone. So if you then do, we can skip the language because I don't think any of you do the language, but math part one and part two, as I said, one part is with calculator, one part is not with calculator. It takes a total of 75 minutes on the level E test. There's not a calculator section on part two on the level E test, nor is there one on the level L. But the medium level and difficult and the advanced levels, um, the allowable amount of time for the medium is 40 minutes on the first part and 15 minutes on the second part. So the total amount is 55 minutes for math. And then you've got 40 minutes on the level D and 35 for the part two. Then you've got 30 and 45, and the locator for the math takes a total of 30 minutes, um, 15 on part one and 15 on part two. So I don't want to freak everybody out. Everybody's probably sitting there going, oh my gosh, this is going to be a lot of testing. Yes, it is, um, because they wanted to make this test more um, valid in terms of a person's ability and, and, and what we want to get them into. So. If you have any questions on, on this allowable time, other than just freaking out, um, you can post those in the box and we'll address them in a little bit. So let's, let's talk about the test content, because I think that it gives you an idea of what your customers will be assessed on and, and kind of realizing the increased rigor in this test. The TABE literacy level is new to Form 11 and 12. They didn't have this in 9 and 10. The content of that literacy level stresses the integration and application of, of instructional skills, basically, um, that people, that, that adults would find meaningful. And level L measures the literacy with questions that, that they use foundational skills. As I told you earlier, if you have a person that you feel has low literacy skills, then you definitely want to administer the level L, which is, again, not online, but a paper pencil version. You would find that out. Um, you don't want to give them a locator if you're going to give them the level L. And with the increased rigor of the table 11 and 12, you're going to find out probably, and DRC tells us in adult education, that more customers or more students in our case are going to locate at that level L test because it's, it's the, just because the rigor has increased. And we'll get to kind of showing you what some of the, te the sample test questions are here in a minute. But Again, only on paper pencil version is that available. Level L basically screens for reversal problems, um, any kinds of, of issues that involve low literacy, uh, vocabulary and word meaning. If they don't have the vocabulary, it actually assesses for that. If they don't have beginning reading skills. So that then, if you have a person that tests at this level, then as you're planning for what they need to do, then you could make referrals possibly um, to assist those, those customers. The reading test um, contains situations and skills that a person needs in regular life or regular work, um, like word meaning skills and critical thinking skills. This is one piece that we found that the tape nine and 10 did not do. It did not assess for critical thinking skills. And that is a significant employability skill that employers look for in, in an employee. And so 
I, I think that, that, that by increasing the rigor with this and by increasing the types of situations that they're providing in these test in this assessment, the new assessment, that it makes it more meaningful and applies more to their work environment. There's also an increased number of reading passages um, on the table 11 and 12, more, more of them than were on the original 9 and 10. So if we look to um, other updates that they have, like I told you, the reading test is now a two-part test. Um, that two-part test is, is based upon um, text and forms and those kinds of things. Um, the level L, E, M, D, and A include two new different types of questions than they've ever had before. And one of those is called an evidence-based selected response. And it's in that type of question, basically, they answer a question about a passage in part A. And, and if they use the online piece, and you look, even if you use a paper pencil, you've got part A would be on one side and part B would be on the other. Because they answer the questions about a passage in part A, and then in part B, they provide evidence to support their previous answer in part A. And I heard a lot of people gasping just now going, oh my. I don't know that our students can do that or our clients can do that, but that's re it's what is required, which is why the locator is so significant. And on the computer-based reading test, like I said, there's an additional new type, but only on the computer-based. Technology-enhanced items, they have to drag and drop. They have to uh, do multi-select responses where more than one answer is going to be selected. A lot of the times, it's just some technology interfused in, into what they're actually doing, which is, is helpful, and, and most of... The, the clients that we have, um, if you look at the age brackets, a lot of technology things are, are challenging for some people, and some it would be very basic for them. For mathematics, is mainly applied math. Before we had some computation in the nine and ten, um, computation skills, and but this one is mostly applied math, which was the old part two. It was computation and applied math, and now mainly all of it is applied math, and it is a progression that includes geometry, it includes statistics and probability, it includes algebraic thinking, it includes expressions, algebraic expressions, algebraic equations, and a whole lot more. So I can hear the gasping because essentially what it is is Table 11 and 12 has increased the rigor. So because of the fact that the workplace is actually increasing expectations of what we're the clients that we're sending them. On the tape math test, a uh, test a calculator can be used on some levels and not on others. And I think it's significant to note um, there are some different types of calculators. Um, <laughs> so you've got to look at this. Before we always just everybody ordered the Casio FX whatever it was. So it was one one calculator was used, but not so on the table 11 and 12. On the level E and the level L, there is no calculator that is that is used at all. On level M, there's a four-function calculator, which just would do the, the basic reading, I mean, addition, multiplication, subtraction, and division. And then level D and A is a scientific calculator. And then a calculator is only used on part two of the math test. Now, my suggestion would be that you don't go out and purchase four-function calculators that you actually teach individuals um, how to use. If they don't know how to use it, you're going to have to review that before the test as to how to use a scientific calculator. Now, the TABE Online that we'll talk about in a little bit actually gives some tutorials about that if you use the TABE Online. So someone's going to need to actually um, ask an individual if they know how to use it. And you're going to see on the locator that if they can't use a four-function calculator or they can't use a calculator at all, then that's a big clue to you as you go through it and, and move on with that customer. We're gonna look at now some of the blueprint documents and some of the sample test questions. The publisher for TABE, DRC, has blueprints for each of these levels um, that are available on their website and I have that listed as a resource at the end of this presentation. So you can kind of look at that and, and if you print the, the PowerPoint off, you will have those website so that you can look at those, but I have it right here if you want to write it down. But the blueprints show the connection to standards. Um, they explain which ones are addressed and 
the emphasis that TAPE puts on each of the standards by question that are included on the test. For training purposes, basically, we're going to only look at one level of each type of blueprint. Um, if you want to, you can go to the TAPE website and on the resource page it will show you where to actually view all the level of blueprints. It may or may not be something that you're interested in, so, but I wanted to hit this just so that you could, could kind of see the connections. Um, each blueprint includes a circle graph, just like this, that talks about the different types of questions that are in it. So on the table 11, 12 reading, they have 38% of those questions are done as craft and structure. So they actually look at the structure and, and stuff of reading a thing. And 47% are key ideas, ideas and details. And, and in my world, that would be main ideas and details. Um, 15% of integration of knowledge and ideas. So just by looking at that, you can kind of see the difficulty has increased. This is some of the standards that, that we refer to, and it actually talks about their, their difficult level. Um, citing several pieces of text, the evidence to support analysis of what the text says, and making inferences, that is, TAPE has a high emphasis level on that. And as I said, you can kind of, if you're interested, you can go and you can look at this more thoroughly um, on their website. But it's got, they have a low emphasis on determining the central ideas and the conclusion, which the 9 and 10 spent a great deal of time on. But as you can see, the things that, that the 9 and 10 focused on are very low focused and very low emphasis on the table 11 and 12. The same thing here with um, the level D. Um, the high level is determining meanings of words and phrases, so their vocabulary content has to be pretty high uh, because they're going to be asking them a lot of questions about vocabulary and meanings of words and phrases as they're using the text. Um, and not only just literally, but figuratively and, and the technical meanings for each of those things. The math blueprints are much the same way that we look at that graph for this one and it, and you look at that and it says okay 21% of it is pretty much evenly split more so than the reading 21% are the number system 11% are functions 18% is geometry 18% is expressions and equations 10% is ratio and proportional relationships and then 22% are statistics and probability and I don't know about you but I have a hard time even saying statistics so I mean much less doing them. So we look at that and say, okay, recognizing and representing proportional relationships between quantities is a high emphasis on the on the level D test. So as you can see, it progressively gets much more difficult as it goes up into the levels because the difficulty is there. They don't spend so much time actually using proportional relationships to solve multiple step ratios and percent problems like it did in the old math test. For the, the level D again, here's here's some that a high focus is on qualitative functional relationships. And I know a lot of people go, well, holy cow. But that is the case. I mean, it's a high emphasis. If you want to look at these blueprints just for the, the simple fact that what actually the emphasis is on some of these. As instructors in adult education, we're using these standards um, in our instruction on a regular basis, but we want to know if if a person is going to be taking the tape, what do we need to focus on instructing them? And so you might need to say, if this is a high focus on this and this person did not place well um, on in their scale score, then possibly they need to be referred for some instruction or we need to do some more instruction with that. So let's look at some sample test questions. And I'm going to tell you right now that the sample test questions and answer keys can also be found at the tabetest.com um, website. And that, again, is listed in the resources at the end. Um, the following sample test questions um, might assist you in gauging the readiness of your customers to enter college-level training programs, because a lot of you are, that's where you're working toward. So if we look at the level E, this is supposedly the, we always call it in adult ed, the easy, the, the medium, the difficult, and the advanced. So you look at this, and it, here's part A. What's the main idea of this article? So they give you an article answer the question and then which two sentences support your answer to part A. So you can see that that's a two-part question 
and there are a lot of them on the reading test, even on the easy level. On the medium level, um, level M, which of these timelines shows the correct history of whale watching based on the article? So they would have to read an article and then they have to then transfer it over into a graphic format to figure out a timeline as to how that's going to work. Again, only showing you these so that you can see the increased rigor of this test. This is the level M. And then the level D is how does the movie scene described in paragraph one? So they would read the thing, connect to the information in paragraph six and seven. So they have to make connections between everything that they're reading. The level A reading, when I wanted to put this in because this is the advanced one, they would read a section and part A would say, how does the author provide effective support for the main idea of the article? They don't ask what the main idea of the article is. They want to know what support has been used for that. And then which detail from the articles best supports the answer to your part A. So again, it's a much more difficult test, um, much more increased rigor. The level E math, this is the, the lowest level without being going to the level L, but it's look at the picture of the flashlight and which of these is the estimate of the length of the flashlight. So you gotta have some experiential information. And, and in my world, I, I sit there and think, okay, I have a really big long flashlight. <laughs> And then I have some that are shorter, and, and they're going to have to kind of figure that out. But they have to know measurement, per se, at that level. And then in the level M, they're talking about this person is selling trail mix online. The, ta the table below lists the number of boxes in the orders on one day for his most popular fruit and nut mix. And then they have to actually go over and plot the information, which one of those actually shows, plots the information showing in that chart. So they've got to transfer from one math function to another, from a graph to a, a actual representation in a, in a chart. For the level D, it's they have to look at the scatter points and, and they have to determine which type of pattern is displayed. So a linear positive association, a linear negative, a linear negative, and most of you are going, I have no idea what the answer to that question is, which is why it's a wonderful thing that the answer keys are also available on that website. Level A math is which of these expressions are equivalent to five squared. So it's, again, equation equivalency, math expressions and their equivalents. Let's hit the table online just for a moment and explore that, that table online. So DRC offers online tools training, which gives the user. So you're, if your client is taking this test, um, it gives them experience, interactive experience with actually the computer-based testing. Um, they, if you, it's a good thing if both your customers and you take the time to explore the online training tools because it's something that, that you may need to, as you're giving that test, even if it's online, it would benefit your customers to do so before taking the tape online. It would benefit you just to know what's available on there. You can get access on their website, and again, it's at the end as well. So let's look. The following screens are what, if a person is taking the tape online, this is what they're going to see when they use the computer-based test. All right. Now, you see that 9 and 10 is here and 11 is, and 12 is here. Make sure that they choose the tape 11 and 12 option because the 9 and 10 is going to be shown on this screen. This is the first screen they're going to see. And the 9 and 10 is going to be here through the by the, to the end of June of 2019. So that being said, our clients are required to take the table 11 and 12, and your clients are required to take the table 11 and 12 beginning January 1st. But this is the first screen they're gonna see, and it's gonna have the nine and 10 there, and the 11 and 12. So they need to know that they need to choose the 11 and 12 and not the nine and 10 until June, and then the nine and 10 will go away. There are other states that are um, delaying, um, beginning the, the 11 and 12. So TAPE, um, DRC is leaving the TAPE 9 and 10 access up for online until the end of June. So then they get this, this online on confirmation that tells what test, before they begin testing, confirm your profile information is correct. So they have to look at all this information and then they have to say, that's fine. Um, and it's a welcome page that they see after they select a form. So the test interface, we kind of look at that these are examples of how items look if customers are taking the computer-based test. So it looks like this. 
Um, let's look at the look down at the bottom of this of this screen, and it says review or end test. And then it's got a pause feature if they need to kind of look at and think about it. And then they can flag it if they want to go back to that question. And then there are some additional options that they would need to explore to see what those would be. For the, the evidence-based select reading response that I told you about earlier in the reading, this is an example from the computer-based test where the article is on the left and then they would read that and then Part A question is up above. I'm, I'm not scaling up there, but part A is up there, and then they have part B. So they would have to actually scale down and know how to move from one screen to the next in order to take the online. And again, the same types of help things are down there that says review or in the test, um, or to pause it, flag it, other options. And again, as I told you, there are, at the top, there are highlighters that are up there. There's a magnifying glass that's up there at the top if they need to have that uh, highlight some information and then, and then review it or come back to it, flag it with those highlighted things. There's a lot involved to just taking this test because, again, it is a, it is a higher pre predictor of their success in, in, our, in, in the workplace. These are tools that customers have access to when they're using the online um, with an explanation. So I would suggest that, that you might actually go to the table online and kind of look at this, but, but it's got a question number seven, uh, page two of two. So it kind of lets them know if they want to move back and forth to any item. If they actually flag something and they want to move back, they could use that tool at the top to go back to the page that they were at. They have Their testing tools are right there. They're customized by item. So they're, they may change. If there's a certain one that's there, if it's a math one, there would be a, um, a calculator that'll pop up. They review their test progress, they pause the test, they flag an item, and they have options that are color choices, contrasting color, uh, reverse contrast, masking, um, and, and then audio settings if it needs to be read to them. In order to get the audio version read, they would need to have uh, applied for, uh, at least ha have proof of a disability. And then there's a back and, and, and next navigation. And then there's the timer, because as I told you, there's allowable time. The tape online actually sets the allowable time so that they kind of know where they're at. And then their name is there with the student. Again, these are the, the tools that are available um, online for, for the, the actual person to actually use. They have the cross off, so they can actually cross something off if they know, in fact, that that's not going to work. They can cross it off. They can pause it. They can do text-to-speech in English, but again, that requires a, a, a actually accommodation, uh, proof of accommodation needs. Um, highlighters and line guides, if they need to use a line to read and, and to guide the progress. Now, let's, now that you've learned about the Table 11 and 12, what, what are some takeaways? So the Table 11 and 12 looks more like other standardized tests. That, that your customers have taken possibly a high school equivalency exam or other um, standardized tests that they've actually taken probably as younger students um, within the public school system. You learned that the rigor has increased and they're expecting more of your customers because the Table 11 and 12 aligns with the expectations of college level training program. And then considerations need to be begin now for the increased, um, sorry about that, for the increased uh, testing time and the materials needed for intake of customers. So you've got to start thinking about that testing time, the increased amount of testing time. The other thing is that the locator is extremely important to the validity of the Table 11 and 12. And although it is slightly longer, it is more predictive in putting those people in the right place. So if you haven't been using the locator up to this point on the 9 and 10, you definitely need to use it for the 11 and 12 because it is required and, and it's helpful to your, your clients. Also, because of, of the ease and the, and the increased accuracy and the reporting platform, you may want to consider implementing the TAVE online test option for your program um, because customers and test administrators can use the online tools training to become familiar with the online platform prior to actually going on and actually taking the test. These are the resources that I promised you that would be at the end. Um, the blueprints website is there. The information, the, the link for that. The
the Tab 11 and 12 sample practice items are there, and then the online tools training is also there. Um, at this time, I'd like to open it up if there are any questions. Um, if you've typed anything in the chat box, they can let me know what those questions or comments are. Um, if you have any questions or comments right now, I don't know if Natasha could uh, mute you, but I'd be happy to try to answer any of your questions. Everyone is unmuted. I want to tell that person that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will mute the background noise. One. Okay. But. Does anyone have any questions or comments? What? Just one question is: Is the PowerPoint available for for us to download? And it is. I'll just go ahead. Um, go ahead and you know, if you have questions, go ahead and enter them into the chat. And while we're waiting for any questions, then I'll just show you. Um, I have my um, contact information up here in case anyone would, would need to contact me as well. Okay. Where would I'd be happy to answer any follow-up questions if they need to contact me afterwards. Where will the download be? Are you going to email it to us or do we I'm going to go show here? you right now. So um, what I have here is every, and let me hit share. I always forget to hit the share button. <laughs> okay, so whenever, what I just need you to know is that whenever you go, um, whenever you want the most recent information or updates um, for any of our webinars that have been held, um, go to LMIWorkNet.com. You can always go to the, footer where it has partner resources. You can go to partner resources either that way and you can select the tile for the youth career pathways. On this page you have your link to your partner tools. We have guidance, we have partner training materials. And so you'll see that we'll have this archived webinar will be posted here once it's downloaded and then uploaded. And then we have the webinar as well as the presentation is right, right there. Um, we also have it in the full list of resources under more resources. So um, the, today's presentation is available in your Youth Career Pathways Partner Guide. So I guess uh, one question I want to ask you all, um, what, what are your initial thoughts prior to actually beginning to implement Table 11 and 12, and don't everyone uh, shout out at one time, but um, what are your initial thoughts? Because we've had a lot of comments from the adult education instructors as well, but I'm sure you all have thoughts about this. Anyone want to share? I mean, it, I think it's going to be a little difficult because it is more of a standardized test, and a lot of the students, you know, probably are low level, and a lot of the ones we've encountered have only um, finished high school and they haven't taken any college classes, uh -huh. that might be a problem. Yeah. Um, and I, well, in adult ed, we have people that actually dropped out of high school. So we're, right. we're doing the same thing. We're looking at that going, okay, they're increasing their rigor. But as I told you earlier, the, the level L test may be your best friend. But I think that if you have people that have gone to high school and you use the locator, it would, it will help you to figure out what test to give them. And I think that 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 is your key right there. Okay. <laughs> and I know that that um, Lisa Jones has been working with ICCB, I think, to figure out some some uh, uh, ways to order um, tests and possibly get get um, some saving for you guys on, on, in purchasing of tests. Um, when I did this originally at, at the WIOA summit. A couple of years back, um, one of the comments from one of the persons that was in the audience was, "Well, we only give the same level of test to everyone, and that's not going to be doable with this with this test." As you can see, with that's why I included the, some of the te sample test questions. You, you don't want to give the same level. You don't want to pick the level D and give it to every single student that, that come, every single client that comes into your your place because it would not be fair to them, and it's not going to help you meet their needs 
uh, the best way that you can. Any other comments about it? There were a couple comments in the chat. I will, I believe this will make it extremely difficult for our customers and it'll be very hard and difficult for our clients. I would agree. I mean, but, but you know, they've, they've up the, up the game. Um, and it's across the board with all the partners. I mean, Title One and Title Two. I think it impacts us the most because we're the ones that give the tape. Um, and I know that, you know, even with Casas, it's the the cost, If tape's gone up, then Casas is going to going to reflect the same thing. So, that any other comments? Well, any, if chat if box, Natasha. Or if there's any grantees that are not going to use the tape, is anybody going to use something different? I do not know. I what I was told um, when Natasha at, when they asked me to do this when Lisa was wanting this to be done was uh, about Casas or Tabe eleven and twelve. And I know that we have been having meetings with um, Title One and joint meetings with Adult Ed and Title One and finding out that some people actually are using Casas. So I I don't know what to tell you about that. Um, that would be uh, an organizational decision. But I believe that they're going more along the lines. We're trying to align the assessment of the different agencies, and I think that that Tab 11 and 12 is probably the way that they're they're leaning. Toward. Natasha, is that right? I mean, yeah, that's more of a yeah, Amy and Tara. Right. Yeah. I mean, there we are accepting other, um, like you said, CASA, there's the best plus that I know um, grantees can use. So that was the question I had for the grantees is, is there anybody else that your organization is already saying, you know, we are, we're only going to, we're going to switch or is your organization only using tape just to kind of see how that looks. Well, I know the best plus and, and CASAs in adult education, we use best plus or best literacy and we use CASAs for our ESL students. Um, and so the TAB is used for all, all others. So if, if you're, if some of these, these grantees are, are working with ESL populations, then they may want to consider using one of those it would be my, okay. my suggestion. That's right. what we do. Because you don't want to get, use a language barrier or something like that to, to, you know, bring the table 11 and 12 in then you're really increasing the, not just the rigor but the difficulty for the on the client absolutely so hopefully everybody heard that because I know with most of your grants um, I can think of you know just three agencies off the top of my head that um, focus on immigrant populations and so hopefully you guys can take that advice and and talk to your your management and your leadership within your organizations about that because that is very very true did anybody from skills join the call I just wanted to double check. Okay. There aren't any more questions or comments. Does anyone have anything else? If not, then I, I thank you all for your attention and um, thank you for.